Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius. Welcome to another day in the fish room. It's been a while since I gave you guys a video of my aquariums. And today I want to give you guys a look at everything. Today we're going to be doing a full fish room tour. So not too much has changed since the last time you saw this tank. This tank is my largest aquarium at 880 gallons and it's where my largest fish live. So just to give you guys a briefing of what's in here if this is your first time seeing a tank. Right here we have the tank boss, Cyclamano. This fish has to be, I'd say maybe 20 inches. Definitely a beast. Not really showing the best color that a mono could show. They could definitely show a lot more gold. But the personality of this fish definitely makes up for it. This fish will eat out my hand. Um, very comfortable with me, and that's just very awesome. Uh, right there in the back, you can see the biggest fish, my Cyclotamentis, speckled peacock bass. Definitely a very beautiful fish. Just still a little bit shy and timid, but he's the second ranking fish in his tank back there. We have my Cyclotamentis, in my opinion, my best looking peacock bass. That green is just amazing. Right next to him, we have the Parasai. I believe this Parasai is a female, um, just because by now a male should have been. With a nuchal hump, a male probably would have been bigger by now too. So I believe that's a female. Right here in the front we have a male jaguar cichlid. This guy is growing very fast to try to catch up with my female. Once he catches up, no doubt they're going to try to breed. I may have to take him out because I don't want to deal with that aggression. But this guy is growing really nicely, really fast. Uh, we have a tiger oscar back there. I believe that is a female based on personality, not too aggressive. Doesn't grow too fast, so I believe it's a female. We have a flag tail for Chila just back there. Um, one of my favorite fish of all time. Very calm, very peaceful. Great algae eater. He's a beast. And then, if we can focus behind him, right there in the shadows, is the most aggressive fish in his tank, my pike cichlid, Crinian cichlid lenticulata. He's four feet back because this tank is four feet wide. So he looks small, but he's maybe the fourth largest fish in his tank and super aggressive. And it's a female too, imagine if it was a male. Females are usually not as aggressive as males and yet it is the most aggressive fish in this tank. Next to her, we have my second biggest fish in the tank. Um, I'm trying to brighten things up because it's way back there in the shadows. You're not gonna see it. But that is my Lima Chevenons. You could kind of see this figure next to the pike. That is a very big fish, over 20 inches, way back there. Um, he comes out to eat and everything. He's just hiding right now. We have two four lion picked this catfish, one right there, one back there in the shadows. What else? We have a fish that accidentally landed in this aquarium. We have this tilapia cichlid. She was bought as a thither fish. No way that I intend to put her in this aquarium. But she's in here, she's growing in this aquarium. And she doesn't look too bad. She's not too aggressive, so I'm gonna leave her in here. And in the shadows, we also have a Black Ghost Knife back there, and he's pretty quiet. Comes out to eat, he eats out my hand. Overall, a nice batch of fish. Not too much aggression. Um, before, I did have some fighting between this guy and the Tementis because you know the Tementis is catching up. And there you are. Nice. Um, but for the most part, not too aggressive. Um, and another thing I was doing with this tank is I'm trying to get as many plants in it as possible. So you can see all these roots. If you come up here, I have this curtain up here to help um, take away some of that glare. Up here I have some plants. The main purpose of these plants is to help out 
just removing waste so you know different maybe i'll do a separate video and just explain this a little bit more but different house plants we have peace lily um wandering jew zebrina purple wandering jew some pothos lucky bamboo a mix of house plants and some of them doing awesome some of them doing not so awesome because it's experimental but the roots coming from these plants are amazing and no doubt they're helping purify the water so yeah that is my 880 gallon aquarium um one thing i have noticed that is pretty weird and cool at the same time is this little fungus that's growing on his wood so look at that orange stuff all of that orange stuff is like a fungus that has been growing quietly and look there's mushrooms that come out of it now this ha every time i try to get it on camera i'm never able to because the mushrooms only last a couple of hours before they disappear but this fungus came out of nowhere i tried taking it off and it grows right back so far it's not harming the fish i actually like the look of it so i'm going to allow it to continue to grow and every now and then it produces mushrooms definitely very weird and as long as it's not bothering the fish i don't mind but um just makes this tank a little bit more natural once again i don't know what it is so of course it's not good having something in your tank that you don't know what it is but um it still has a nice effect or a look to it but we'll see uh, what becomes of that but yeah this is the 880 gallon aquarium let me know what you guys think about this tank mm -hmm. second largest aquarium um, a lot of stuff going on in this tank I will be making changes eventually but for now this is the current stock so first off there was a slight rescape every time I go in there to try to catch a fish I end up having to tear the entire escape apart so this is the current escape not looking too bad um, when it comes to fish some of these fish in this tank are in here but purposely just for grow out so we have Sigma Azul Peacock Bass this little guy is about five six inches and I'm growing them out for the 880. Same thing with this pickup bass, like Mono. I bought this fish before I actually knew that this one in here is a Sigma Mono. I thought that this was a Sigma Solaris as it was sold to me. But some of you guys told me that that indeed is a Sigma Mono. So now I have two of them. Normally I like to get um, as much diversity as possible. But maybe it's not a bad thing. Maybe if this, this one goes with the other Mono, they both encourage each other to show the most amount of color. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we have a female Jaguar eventually. I like her to go inside the 880. Same thing with my female Dova in the back back there. If she gets big enough, I also would like her to go on the 880. And finally, this guy. This is the second rink of fish in this tank right there. That green fish, Mesoharis Gephrius. Um, if he reaches, I'd say 12 inches, I definitely will put him in this aquarium because he's a South American fish. He, gets, he could grow up to about 16 inches. He has an appetite for carnivorous foods so he definitely would be a nice addition and he's very gorgeous and he deserves just the best tank so he's in there um other than that we just have a mix of fish we have the bala sharks which i'm just so in love with these guys so awesome i love the activity level i love just the behavior normally they follow my thing all around this is the biggest one he's about maybe nine going on ten inches and they definitely have that shark feeling to them. They swim around. Sometimes this guy swims with his dorsal fin out of the water. So just a very nice fish to keep, especially being that I have five of them. Definitely very awesome. Same thing that could be said about these tinfoil barbs. Now the plan was to eventually rehome the tinfoil barbs because they do get very big. But the longer they stay in this tank, the more I enjoy them and the more I want to keep them. So we'll figure out what we're going to do with them in the future. But I have seven of those tinfoil barbs, five of these bala sharks. And then I just have um, some sill dollars, sill dollars in here. They're cool fish. And these guys, like, if they were a little bit bigger, I definitely wouldn't mind putting them in this aquarium. Um, but the thing is, at this size, they will be eaten. But I had these sill dollars for a while, 
and um, they're just awesome. So yeah, I wouldn't mind giving them a nice bigger tank with a bigger school, but we'll see what happens in the future. And then I just have a mix of cichlids. Um, we have this beautiful fish right here, Geophagus brasiliensis. Definitely one of my favorite fish in this aquarium. Um, this fish also gets pretty big, and I was considering putting it in this aquarium, but it is a sand sifter, so it might be more comfortable in this aquarium where there's a ton of sand to sift. Um, other than that, we have the Mayan cichlid. I would have put the Mayan cichlid in here as well, but that Mayan cichlid is a female. The females won't get too big, so if she's not big enough, she won't be able to go in here. Um, we have convicts in here. I might take out the convicts because the male, he's been stretching out because he wants to breed and um, he can't because he can't protect his babies from these other fish and that is really stressing him out. If you look, his fins don't look too great and that's all because of stress from not being able to breed. Um, we have this fish right here is a jaguar dovi hybrid. She is the sister of the fish down there. She's um, not showing too much color but definitely not as aggressive as him. And maybe with her as well. I'm saying all these fish that want to go and they eat eating. It's going to be, um, time will tell what will happen to these fish. But a lot of these fish I do believe will look nice in this aquarium. And if I ever grow those fish out and move them in here, some of these fish that are not predatorial I'll take out, like the parasite, um, the tilapia, the jaguars. If they ever breed, I'm going to take them out. So I know I plan on putting so many fish in here. But I'm going to keep it balanced. If I need to, I'll take some fish out. Um, the goal is just to have this as a complete predator aquarium and then this will be a display of cichlids. Other than that we have the Jack Dempsey. Look at him, he's a gorgeous fish. We have the Red Devil back there being all shy. I was thinking about rehoming the Red Devil just because he hides all day. I, the same person that I gave my tilapia to, my hornet cichlid, that is the butter cold fry. Um, he kept a 400 gallon aquarium with all Central and South American cichlids and that might be the better home for Donald's the Red Devil because right now he's pretty depressed. Other than that, we have a female green terror. We have, what else? Um, we have a Raphael catfish somewhere. We have a Brisnose pleco somewhere. And that is this aquarium. Um, like I said, there's gonna be some fish that I take out eventually. There's gonna be some fish that I add eventually. And we're just gonna take it one step at a time. Forgot to mention this black belt. That black belt back there is about six inches, I do believe. It is a female, and that black belt has fights and quarrels with just about every fish in this aquarium. Uh, but yeah, that is the 350 gallon aquarium. Um, next, I'll give you guys a quick look at my filtration. This is the filtration for these two large aquariums, a sump system, and I wanted to give it the best benefit as possible, so I have some lights, and I have some aquaponics in here. So we are growing out some tomatoes. This is one tomato plant. This is one cherry tomato plant. We had some, um, what is that, kale? The kale isn't doing too well, but look at these tomato plants. Definitely growing out very nicely. And once I get some tomatoes, maybe I'll make a video on that. This fish right here, this is a female Jaguar Dovi hybrid. Her brother lives down here. So when I first bought these fish, I bought two of them. They were very tiny. One was growing much faster than the other. The one was also more aggressive. And it came to the point where one day I came home and some of the tank mates that was living with these two fish had their heads ripped off and I knew it was this guy. So I decided to separate them and see what becomes of them. And this is Adonimus. This is a few months later. And since the last time you saw this fish, he definitely has changed a ton. He produced a ton of aggression towards me, a ton of personality, and I actually really enjoy it. I love that interaction. Um, I was just going through different experiments with him, trying to figure out how to bring out his full potential. 
I was taking some of the female fish like this female jaguar, a female dova. I was catching them, bringing them down here with a divider, trying to see if he would pair up with them um, all the times. And it ended up badly with him getting on the other side of the divider and beating the female almost to death. Now this guy has a, a number of different colors that he display for different reasons. Um, he's showing this dollar color because he's fighting me. But let's say he was to fight another fish that was similar to him, like a fish like himself. So we take a mirror and put it in front of him and you're going to see this guy transform. So you saw he was that brown grayish color and now look at him. The golden color is unlocked. So this is his true color. This is his dominant coloration. And I must say, I am definitely well pleased. So yeah, that's Adonis. And you see how quickly he let the colors go. And now he's this beige color. So definitely a very interactive fish. And I can't wait to just continue watching this fish grow. Next door to the home, we have this 40 gallon aquarium. And in this tank, I just have a little pair of convicts. Um, the convicts were living inside this aquarium. And they were my only pair of convicts that didn't breed. And I was like, let me give them a chance. And I put them in here. And the first try, they had about 100 babies. And these babies are um, growing nicely. So this is actually, I think, a third generation for me. These are the grandchildren of that male pink convict over there. So yeah, I don't know if that was the female he bred with. But they bred last year. And they gave me the female that I'm using to produce these fry. And there's about a hundred of them. I know a lot of you guys told me that you don't want me to use them as feeders. But honestly, that's probably what's going to happen because I'm growing them out nice and healthy. And that's probably the best thing I could do for some of my predatorial fish. Feed them feeders that I grow up um, just for them. So I'm probably going to end up using these as feeders. But still not sure. Of course, if I find a nice looking one, I'll keep it. But yeah, this tank was um, just a little experiment to get these fish to breed, these convicts who never bred before, and also to see their interaction with this guy. Lastly, in the fish room, we have this tank which sits on the opposite side of my other aquariums. Um, this tank I'm just using as a grow out long term. I'm most likely going to turn this into my Mabuna aquarium. So all the Mabuna that I'm going to show you guys a little bit later on are going to be coming into this aquarium eventually. But for now, we have some grow outs. So I'm sure right away you notice this Oscar. This is a Tiger Oscar. I bought it as an albino red Oscar. And I, as you can see, it's obviously not an albino red. It's a, Another Tiger Oscar, which could be a bad thing because, you know, fish hate fish that look the same. So I'll figure out what to do with this guy as he gets older. But after that, we have a nice mix of Vieja. So the pink guy in the back is Vieja Finestratus. Um, it was very cool watching this guy go from his normal pattern to this pink coloration. I was actually documenting each week of this fish's growth, but I lost all the footage, so that sucks. Um, other than that, we have a Vieja Brahoderi. This fish is about four to five inches came from tangled up a cichlid, a very rare cichlid I'd say, and especially the variety. This is like a river rain variety, so the body is a little bit more slender, but definitely um, a very interesting fish and definitely gonna be a very beautiful fish as an adult. We have a Vieja Argentia somewhere in here. Not sure where, he'll come out a little bit later. But my main focal point, on the fish that I'm most excited about are the smaller the Vieja bifasciatus or bifasciatus. Um, definitely a fish that has a lot of potential. 
These will most likely be my most colorful fish in the future. That is the Vieja Argentinas right there. But these smaller guys, I have six of them. And they most likely will be my most colorful fish out of all the fish that I keep. These guys have a ton of potential and I definitely can't wait for these guys to grow up. Um, so yeah, that's them. Once I can get the smallest one to be about his size, I'll move them over to the 350. Then I'll bring the Mabuna down here, figure out what to go, and the place my Mabuna upstairs. But yeah, that is the last tank down here in the fish room. right here is my no tech setup this is a 20 gallon aquarium that doesn't rely on any technology any electricity um, I have no light the only light for this tank is the natural light that comes from the Sun I have no filter for this aquarium the only filtration that I receive is from these plants and I have no heater these fish are subtropical so they stick with the temperature of the room and this tank is doing absolutely amazing now I must apologize because I should have gave you guys more videos of this aquarium um, because you really can't appreciate it as much as I can because I've seen the growth of this tank and it's amazing to see how far this tank has really come. Um, what, it's been like three months that Amazon sword has grown dramatically. When I put it in here, it was like six inch leaves and now look at that, 12 inch leaves coming out of the water. Same thing can be said about this Amazon sword over here. Um, Amazon swords definitely love this type of setup. Same thing can be said about this dwarf sage. All the light green leaves are new growth. You can see there's a ton of it. Um, you can see how tall this dwarf sage is as well. I think it's because that, um, because the light is indirect, it has to grow a little bit longer for it to just, I guess, absorb more light. But I don't mind. Definitely give me somewhat of a jungle feel, and I definitely like that. And I'm pretty sure the fish enjoy it as well. This crypt is doing well, and I'm um, just have a mix of plants over there and. Plants are doing awesome. The underwater plants provide oxygen for the fish. They also remove a little bit of waste, but the main plants that remove the most waste are my immersed plants because these plants have um, reached to atmospheric CO2. They um, grow faster and thus they consume more waste. So we have Lucky Bamboo. I love how tall it's growing. We have um, Pothos, more Lucky Bamboo, some water palms. This little plant right here is a trimming from this monster right here. And you see how big it gets. So um, if it does start growing, it definitely will do a great job consuming waste produced by these fish. Probably won't get that big, but um, even if it grows two or three feet, that is definitely gonna have a huge impact on purifying this water. Now when it comes to the livestock of this tank, first off, um, I gotta give a shout out to these Nerite snails. Look at how clean the glass is on this tank. I never wiped it since day one. And that glass is spotless. I have five nerite snails. As you can see one is right there. I'm not sure if it's focused in, but that's one right there. And it's five scattered abroad. I was worried whether or not um, they would be able to get the job done. Because the last time I had this set up, it was in a little container. And that thing was covered in algae. But as you can see, this thing is free of algae. Now, I do have some algae on some of the leaves for the plant. You can see Amazon Sword has some algae on the edges. But definitely nothing to worry about and it's all thanks to those five guys right there so definitely um this setup is dependent on those nerite snails besides that we have fish now i didn't show you guys when i first put these fish in but right after that first video i made of this aquarium i decided to go with these fish these are paradise garami you know when i had my last setup this was the fish i chose and when I think about it, this is just a perfect fish for this setup. In the summer months, the oxygen levels may be low inside this aquarium because there is no filter. And, you know, one of the key functions of a filter is to put oxygen in the water. Because I have no filter, oxygen levels may get low on very hot days. But these fish can take oxygen directly from the surface. So that's definitely a huge plus. On top of that, the cold temperatures, being that this tank is without a heater, I need a fish that's cold hardy and that's also warm hardy. You know, in the summer, we had temperatures... And the upper 80s close to 90 degrees and now that it's winter 
Um, with all these windows, we do get a draft. And the temperature of this setup currently is, what is it? That's about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold for most tropical fish. Luckily, these guys are subtropical and they handle it like champs. So I have three of them. Um, decided to go with three, hoping that eventually I may get a mated pair. Look at these two interacting. I do believe I have one male and two females. You see the one with the stripes. Um, judging by the patterns on his body, I'm thinking that this one right here is a male. And I believe that the other two are females, but time will tell. Eventually, hopefully they pair off. They are a little bit aggressive towards each other, but with this tank, the length of it, and all the hiding places from the plants, nothing to worry about. So I have that trio in here, and I think that the tank is ready for another fish if I want to go. Um, judging by the growth of the plants, I do believe that it could handle another fish added to the bio load. And I'm not sure what to choose. I want something, of course, that's cold hardy, um, if the oxygen levels ever go down in the summer when it gets hot, I want a fish that can handle that. Um, I don't need another fish that's as showy as this fish. I don't mind if that other fish hides a little bit. I was thinking like a auto sinkless or something like that. That might help with the algae on the plants. I don't know. But um, so far, I'm loving this tank. It's um, very simple, very easy. I do once a week water changes. And overall, just definitely a very awesome tank. And um, I love the fact that I really don't have to put much effort and yet I get such great results. Okay, so this right here is my 210 gallon aquarium and it houses my African cichlids. We have an assortment of Mbuna cichlids. Pretty soon these guys will be going downstairs into that 125 that I showed you guys earlier. Um, this guy right here, the Madagascar cichlid, this is a starry night cichlid. He's probably going to go in my 350 because he's more closely behaved to like a Central American cichlid than he is to these African cichlids. And then we have this big guy right here. I'm thinking I might put him and the 880, he is big enough. Um, I just, he is African, African cichlid, and I wanted to keep those central, central and South American cichlids, but the female that I have in there, she's doing well, so he should do well in there as well. So once I'm ready, this tank is gonna be converted into something else. But for now, I definitely love the Mabuna in this aquarium. I love their activity level. Of course, I love their different colors. Look at how bright some of these fish are. Um, center screen, we have the cobalt blue zebra. This fish just sticks out so much, so bright, so vibrant. Same thing with the female Kenyai right in front of them. Um, we have the ACI. This right here is the biggest out, out of all the Mabuna. This male yellowtail ACI. And he actually has a female that's holding eggs back there. So this is the first female out of this batch to actually hold eggs in her mouth. And she's held them in her mouth for a couple of weeks now. So I'm pretty sure if I was to go and strip her, I would be able to get all those babies out. Um, but I'm not sure if I want to do that now. Right there on that rock, you can see a female Bristol's Pleco. But yeah, definitely enjoying this aquarium. I definitely enjoy the activity level. But being that, being that this is my third largest aquarium, I prefer to use it on some of my larger growing fish. So either my Jaguar pair that I have an 880, if they ever breed, I'll bring the, those up here, or Dynamus, whichever one is ready soonest. But yeah, this is the. 210 and as of now definitely an enjoyable setup okay everyone so we'll finish things off with a quick look at the pond so today um, we have temperatures in the 40s close to 50 so it's definitely a lot warmer than what we had before um, but these guys every time i see this it's just a reminder how tough how strong how hardy these koi are um, we had our first snowfall most of the pond was frozen ice cold water and these guys just sit there hibernating and doing their thing so um, just very awesome they have maybe three four more months of nothing but silence sitting there quietly no moving no eating so it's just always an amazing story watching these guys 
survive these winter months. It's crazy because we, in these cold temperatures, we still have plant growth. Um, the moss, the moss is growing like crazy, even though it's freezing cold. Look at it. All under here, we have moss continuously growing. Um, so it's awesome how even in the winter, this pond is maturing. Um, besides that, come over here. This pond over here, I'm still considering whether or not I should break it down. Look at Rocky. Uh, but I'm still, still trying to figure out whether or not this pond should be broken down because um, I'm not really doing much with it. Um, we have plants in here. I didn't even trim the plants for the season. I just let it be. Um, and yeah, you can't see anything, but this thing is a mess. But part of that mess is still um, a little bit entertaining. I have the mosquito fish in here and it's fun to watch them hunt bugs and things like that. So maybe I'll stick around with this one. Um, but yeah, that is a first look at my setups as of 2021. As always, let me know what you guys think. If you want more, make sure you subscribe. And I guess I'll catch you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.